there's some uh, conventional wisdom, conventional wisdoms out there, or some. I they could be called myths. Um, I think there's some certainly some truth to them, but maybe let's do a little bit of like kind of a rapid fire thing. Uh, myth number one, which I think is a myth. Uh, the industry is oversaturated, and there's no way that a new person can get work. What do you think? Um, do I think that's a myth? Um, yes and no. Um, so the take on it is uh, obviously hurricane seasons. You have a lot of people who come in um, and, and want to learn, but it takes those who are dedicated to do what they do. Right. Um, yeah. You can make it if you're determined. Uh, I see a lot of people say, hey, there's no work, but it's those same people who don't want to go anywhere outside of their front door. And so at that point, it is a myth. It is that you don't want to get in your vehicle and drive somewhere to get the experience that you need so that that company can then say, oh, shoot, this guy has been building his uh, training abilities of what he's or his learning abilities. And now he, now we know what he can do because we've seen him turn in five or ten claims. Okay, let's plug him in here, and they will place you somewhere at a bigger volume scale. So uh, I would agree that um, there is a lot of people, but I'd also agree that you can't just sit around and wait for the companies to call you and just and and not be putting in work. If you're not putting in work in some aspect then you are just part of a larger scale. But that larger scale, it may be of some people who just are just waiting around for the call. I don't wait around for the calls anymore. I have people that I touch base with. Um, um, so as far as that myth goes, that's, that's how I'd kind of, you have to adjust with what's going on, you know? Very clever. <laughs> so, all right, myth number two. I don't need to get any more. I don't need to get licenses. I don't need to, or maybe just my home state or designated home state license. Because when the storm happens, I can get it really fast online. Uh, so I believe that's a huge myth. Um, I'm currently licensed, and I believe it's 33 states. Wow. Um, Which one do you not have? I, I, it's either 32 or 33. I don't have Hawaii, and I don't have New York. Um, okay. now the only 32. reason I don't it's 34 have those, total. Okay. The only reason I don't have those is because the past four years it's nonstop. Like I've yeah. been nonstop busy that I don't have time to study to take the test. Um, it's all my goal to do that, to do this year, but th there are certain companies I worked for, let alone last year who, um, who are literally, I got a text from a operations manager of a company saying, I was literally praying for somebody who had this license who could go run claims just for a weekend. So I took a four day trip and ran about 40 claims just because an adjuster had a death in his family and couldn't work that weekend. But they had a recent, yeah. it wasn't catastrophe. They weren't calling 10 or 15 people to go out there for an extended time. But that helps pay for my entire month, you know, and that's, yeah. and, and I've never used that license before. So, yeah. um, even, even where I'm at now, um, I got this call. I got a text message while I was on vacation saying, can you come work all the way up North? And I've never in almost a decade been up this way to do any work. And I, I was like, yeah, sure. And they're like, let me know what license you have. I said, I have all of them up there except New York. And they're like, all right. So they gave me a territory and they said, hey, uh, we, you know, we forgot. Do you have this license? And I was like, yeah. They're like, okay, we got two jobs. Do you mind going up there? And it's just like, even if it's two jobs, right? Like, and that's, it's a four, four hour trip. The first question I'm asking is, do you guys pay mileage or would you guys pay mileage on these two or even for me to go run up the same day. And if you talk with the firms, they, the carrier may, may not pay for that mileage, but the firm may pick it up because you're doing them a solid and they don't have yeah. anybody that way, but you have the yeah. license. So yeah. I really think it is very um, smart um, because in the long run, it's going to be those people who have those extra licenses who are going to get the work or continue to get more work versus the ones who only have their home state.
Yeah. And I would argue that even if they don't offer mileage, I'd still take it just because you, like you said, you are doing them a solid. And if they can't pay you mileage, it's going st- to, I mean, the managers, they, most of them ran claims before and they know, they know what they're yeah. asking you to do. Right. And, and, and they're, and they're, they're, like, they're going to, it's going to sit in the back of their mind. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I really wish we could have given that dude some mileage. That's a long road trip. And the traffic in the Northeast, you know, something pops up. I'm, I'm putting Christian on these commercial claims over here in Minneapolis. See if you want. Yeah. Which licenses, uh, if if so, say you know, thirty two licenses, thirty four licenses. That's a, that's it's kind of expensive. Maybe fifteen hundred bucks, maybe two thousand dollars, right? Something like that to get them all. Yeah. And then probably not nearly as much to keep them maintained. But right. Um, if you if you're like, all right, well, I only have the checkbook right now as a new adjuster to get um, a limited number. Like, right. what are the absolute non-negotiables that you think kind of move the needle, the, would move the needle the most for a new adjuster to be the most deployable right out of the gate? Yeah. Um, my biggest thing, there's a couple couple things to that. Um, because when I started, that was my position. I didn't have the income to do that. Um, so within my budget, I had to make sacrifices even if it was on a monthly basis to, hey, like I can pick up one license for the month, uh, for this month or, or to this month. And, and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, so that's kind of a way I looked at it from the beginning for myself, um, in regards to, Hey, I have this money, which licenses should I go with? It kind of depends on the part of the year, you know, uh, sure. currently we're getting into hail season. So I would look towards the higher middle States of, Hey, which of these States, you know, can I obtain, um, I know there's a couple like um, Illinois you don't have to have a license for. Um, that's a huge one um, yeah. that you don't have to worry about. Um, but that's where I kind of start, kind of those middle states. Uh, as you, if you track the the hail, um, like hail reports or something, or NOAA, um, so that you can see those are the states I'd focus with if we're getting into hail season. Obviously, if we're getting towards hurricane season, uh, that Gulf uh, Coast area is going to be your heads up and then obviously up the coastline. Um, So that's how I'd kind of play it is what part of the year are you at um, and what are we going into? So um, that's how I kind of recommend things because most people just say, oh, you need these coast states and such. But if it's not hail, if it's not hurricane season, then why not get some of the other ones that can benefit you now? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, let's see. What's another myth? Okay, so I hear sometimes adjusters or sometimes on, on social media I'll see this um, where people will will not want to invest in training um, right out of the gate as newbies before they've ever even handled a claim, um, thinking that they're going to get on the job training and really all they need to do is just get a license and a computer with Xactimate installed on it. Um, I think just a little bit of editorializing here, but I, I think that that's probably one of the big reasons why a lot of adjust, a lot of those newbies crash and burn on their first mm-hmm. storms. Um, but what advice would you give to people who, um, want to make sure that right out of the gate, when they get handed their first 50 claims or 40 or 70 claims or whatever, they're going to get on some big hurricane, right? And... How are they going to make it through this pile of claims without running away screaming or, or totally crashing and burning? What should they do beforehand? Yeah, so before the storm, um, I think there is a lot uh, nowadays. There's a lot of stuff out there that is free um, that you don't have to pay for, especially, like I said, uh, if you're on that budget and you're putting the, that money towards licensing, right? So you have zero dollars left for any kind of training. Um, there is uh, core logic for Symbility uh, is all free. Um, yeah. You can do. I don't know if their new certifications they just came out with cost anything. I haven't gotten. Once again, I'm just I'm uh, rolling right now. So I don't I know. I think if that, they're like a hundred, a couple. They're a hundred, one or two hundred bucks a piece. Okay, I have like a okay. one and two. Yeah, um, but I know that their training's free. I know you can download free, and then you can always set up your test your test uh, dummy file, which uh, if anything costs you $15 once it's created. Um, But past that, then you can work on that and do all the training. Um, I know that there's a lot of stuff out there um, in regards to each 
you know, like different firms, they have their own CMS and they have their own trainings. Um, and a lot of them for the stuff they offer um, online doesn't cost anything. Now, if you want to go do an in the cl- in in class with them or a one on one with them, that's when then you're going to have to pay for their for their class. Right. Um, but a lot of them do offer, especially depending on if you're signed up with their uh, newsletter emails, they'll send out emails that say, hey, look, we're at this part of the year. Make sure you follow up on these different uh, training guides. Um, and so I think as a newbie, as you're getting on the roster with those different major firms, um, if you'll look, if you'll just take a minute and to look into their um, their actual websites, they do offer a lot before you have to go and you know pick out one of the um, one of the independently um, adjusting training companies to go with. You know, um, I think if you do have money to do that, that's a fantastic thing to do. Uh, obviously we have the up and comings, um, well now going on a couple of years with, uh, with the different things that weren't available when I started, you know, that right. I think are fantastic, um, and are helping adjusters be, be well set off. Um, the, I'd also say, and just want to make note, if you're, if you're going to a hurricane and you're getting that stack and it's just, you know, a cat five and blown out and you're getting that 50, 70 stack, um, I think for for me, something I learned over the years is the worst thing uh, that I didn't do prepare, to prepare myself was not working for that carrier or not working for that firm before the storm. If you don't know how to work that CMS, if you don't know how those files are written, if you don't know if ITEL, Hover, uh, Eagle Views are needed, uh, if you need to do an ITV on a file, um, right. that's half of the stress. Um beyond the half of the stress of where am I staying and, and, you know, where am I getting power or gas or how am I going to run all these claims or I'm not getting paid for the first 15 days, you know, I would, I would think you, you take away a lot of stress if you can get one or two just daily claims for them before you work for them on a hurricane. The mine difference one year, I got a couple files just trying to help out because a company knew I was doing day claims for them already uh, getting into the hurricane stance was difficult for me because I had, I had done one or two dailies for them six months ago. Right. And hadn't touched yeah. anything else within their system. The following year I worked for them the entire, you know, six to eight months of the beginning of the year. And once we got to hurricane season, to me, it was just another walk in the park. You know, I had done it for eight months on a continual basis. So once we got, got there, I would not, I was knocking things out because I was able to yeah. take that time ahead. And it's not, it wasn't like, it wasn't the, Hey, we're sending out the emails. You know, are you going to work with us for hurricane? I mean, those are fine. And I would love to work with everybody, but if I haven't worked with you before or any time during, during the year, it's very difficult for me to then just accept to work with you. And then I come out of the gate as a, as a season adjuster looking like I have no idea what I'm doing. And that's never fun to, to get into because you're just adding more stress on that you didn't need to begin with. So what does it actually look like when adjusters with decades of experience between them scope a hail damaged house on video? What about how to actually do a claim in Xactimate? What is stability and how do you even get started in it? What if there was one place, one huge and expanding library of property claims adjusting videos showing how it's done? What if there were also complete Xactimate certifications as well as the latest and most up-to-date Xactimate mobile training? You know, what if? What if the dream was a reality? Get started for free binging all the desk and field claims adjusting videos you can stand right now at adjustertvplus.com. Think of it as a virtual ride-along. Speaking of ride-alongs, click here to get right along to the next video. Because it's a, well, do you see how it's, it's a pun, you see? Ride along. Get it right. Just move right along versus ride along. It's right along. Get right along to it.